Now, when you started taking dance classes at 13, was that a little tiptoe into your true queer self? Yeah, I think it was like right before that. Well, I mean, to be quite honest, I knew I wanted to be a girl at like five. Uh -huh. like, I knew I didn't like the girl. I wanted to be the girl. Right. So I, I understood that quickly. And my family, like the girls just kind of knew. Like I was um, reminiscing with my niece who I grew up with. She's like a year older than me. And she was telling me that she... Uh, like we remember we were playing like dress up and we we're an accountant or a lawyer and we all had boyfriends. And like I was living a girl's experience like as a kid and they let me, which was really cool. And I never even knew that until like later on when I realized. Uh -huh. um, but I totally forgot what we were saying. Oh, we were just talking you know, about how being in dance, <laughs> you're just hair flipping, well, I'll forget. I know, gosh. <laughs> one too many and then it's all loose. Right. Right well, we were talking about how d getting into the oh, arts and into dance right. sort oh. of helped give you like a little, little crack that door open. It was a little, a little yeah, it was a, definitely an intro. I remember watching like Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake, uh, like the VMAs and like re memorizing the whole dance and performing it at school. Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> for uh, like our homecoming, like we had to like battle each other with dances. Um, and we all put together a number. And a girl there, my friend Janelle, who's still like one of my really good friends, who's about to give birth actually. So shout out to Janelle, love you, um, good luck. But she introduced me to dance. She told me like, you should come. Like you would be really good. And I never left the dance studio after that. Like it was done. <laughs> and that was that era of Britney Spears when they all oh. did the, um, Yes, it was like you wanted All to be the a sound dancer. effects, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now at 17, you started sneaking into drag clubs. Take me through one of those nights of sneaking oh, out. Oh my gosh, it was it, well. First of all, sneaking out of the house from like my parents who were like, "Where are you going?" So first of all, I was like all wrapped up in a like a backpack, right. having to go over to a friend's house and get ready and kind of like you know, put a little like makeup on, but I was just like still presenting as boys. So I wasn't having to like get into the full drag, but my first time there it was a huge, it was one of our icons um, in Hawaii, it was her birthday. So everyone that was anyone that was a performer was at that show performing. So I got like a crash course in one night of, uh, you know, butch drag, of uh, like trans drag. And immediately I was drawn. I'm like, I, I, I need it. <laughs> yeah. I need to go there. So I was there every Friday at this like 18 and over club and immediately asked to like get in a show and did everything I could like for nothing. <laughs> for of like course. nothing on a Thursday. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's how everybody has to start, uh, for right? free on a yes, Thursday. Like at 7 o'clock on a Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> now, at that point, um, you, were, you realized that you were queer. You were still sort of, your gender identity journey was still in process, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's weird, because I never, I just went from like, oh, no, I'm not gay because my parents and everybody will find out, to right. I'm a girl. So there wasn't like the, there was like a really small intermediate moment of me being like, a gay boy, mm -hmm. but that really was that awkward stage of transitioning when first starting hormones and stuff. So it was right. more so, I was just like, oh my God, I gotta be a girl. You know, it was uh, still queer as fuck. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so so crazy. you're a teenager, you're doing drag, you're sort of discovering yourself and you started doing shows mm -hmm. at the clubs. Tell me at about those clubs. early early shows. I was, uh, gosh, I mean, I just love dancing so much. So I would take like routines that we learned that day and just make my own costume. I, I really was emulating the girls that I danced with. They were so sexy and like, like just so ultra feminine. And I pretty much modeled how I still do drag <laughs> after that. And it's, I mean, if it ain't broke, right? Yes, exactly, yeah. sweetie. Because you're doing it perfectly. <laughs> the costumes have gotten less. The hair flips have gotten more. Yes. The chiropractor bill has gotten higher. I bet, honey. <laughs> now, you finally decided at 22 to move to Chicago and pursue drag full time. Was that a big decision? Uh, what was that, what was going oh, in God, through your was, mind at that time? It was like a, like a, heaven sent I really wanted to do something in the arts that allowed me to make money you know and and to feel like I could like make a career out of this and working at the baton which is one of the oldest um, they call it female impersonation bars I don't know if that's like 
completely uh, right, <laughs> like that's PC not really now. today's term. Right. Yeah. But pretty much it was like the most beautiful uh, trans and uh, butch artists or drag queen artists, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And um, they were just the top of the tops. And uh, the pageant that I won, Miss Continental, the owners of the, uh, the pageant also own the baton. So as soon as I started competing and like getting into pageants, that's when uh, the opportunity came. That was really like school. Like right. drag 101. <laughs> just soaking up everything. Yeah, and everyone and what they're doing, how they carry themselves. Like the way these girls would like get themselves together in three minutes, like a full costume and hair change and um, all these like cool tricks. It was mesmerizing and I was a fool like in the beginning, you know. Uh -huh. I was just like a kid trying to figure it all out and they were just so seasoned. And very kind, very, like, they taught me a lot. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I mean, it's nothing like being able to soak up the knowledge from yeah. the, the generations of drag history that came before. Yeah, and that's what I really love, because I love history and I love drag history. I love that you have to know where you came from to know where you're going and um, to know your references and to know the, the, the creativity that people had even back then, especially when it was so... Uh, uh, pushed down, so suppressed, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, for those of you who don't know, it hasn't always been this easy to Listen be queer, time. gay, trans, <laughs> uh, any of the things that, especially drag artists, it wasn't so celebrated. Yeah. It was sort of pushed down as taboo, but the art and the beauty that was still able to be created oh. is, is really something to always remember. Yes, absolutely. Now you've been moving, you moved around, you stayed in Chicago for seven years. Now we're not just dashing over your win in Miss Continental, we're gonna get <laughs> to that a little later. Uh, but then you moved to Orlando, another drag capital. Yeah, yeah I was there for two, three years. Um, and I worked at Southern Nights, which was revolution back then. Uh, I would work at Parliament House and at Pulse Nightclub. They, they were just so amazing. It was right when I won Miss Continental that I moved. So I definitely was traveling a lot, but being able to still have uh, a, a space to come home and know that, hey, I could like jump on a stage, make a few dollars, yeah. pay, the, pay the electric bill. You know? <laughs> Very important. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. The girls there, you know, they love drag. Like everyone just loves drag and like they are in drag. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they are. Like I love it. Like you can't be like just fishy and demure like you even the girls are like dolls you know they're dolled out i love it the dolls, <laughs> the, honey, dolls. the orlando dolls <laughs> always bring it to the floor now you moved here to los angeles five years ago after you divorced from a woman yes sasha can you please tell me all about this <laughs> well i mean I like what I like. I like pretty things. Yes. You know? Um, I consider, I, I don't even know the word to call it, but I like everything. All know? right. You got a pulse <laughs> and an Instagram <laughs> handle on my itch. Yes, honey. Um, but she was great. She uh, identifies as a lesbian and has always been with uh, cis, uh, fe female, biological women. But we had a connection and we saw each other's souls and went on a ride for a few years. Yeah. And, uh, then we got off the ride. <laughs> right, as it does happen. <laughs> the ride usually ends. Uh -huh. so, I mean, we, we're still great friends, and um, yeah, it was a great moment in time. That's great. I mean, again, as someone who has love for everyone, there's no reason you should be limited in right? who you're with. Right, I mean, you gotta know. Yes, honey. You gotta try. <laughs> <laughs> So as you were a fresh divorcee, you hit oh. Los Angeles, and sweetie, it all started. Oh my gosh, I was like hotsy tatsy. I uh -huh. was like, you know, feeling LA and trying to like eat all this raw food and stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nothing stuck. You're like, this Hollywood lifestyle oh my is gosh. out of like, this world. Mm. But um, LA was uh, LA. It's been great. It's been the most. Um, the, the closest I can go to home, you know, it's the easiest to get home to, to Hawaii. So I get to visit my family a lot more now than, say, Orlando, where I could, like, it was That's like, a long journey, flight. yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, I have great friends. All my dance friends and friends from Hawaii are here. So we have, like, a little Hawaii commune of family. And um, it feels good. It feels really lovely. How have you, how do you relate to your family now? Have they accepted you now, or is there still tension there? Um, 
I, don't, I wouldn't say tension. I mean, we all just like get along. They mm -hmm. love it. I mean, they think I'm cool and all the nieces and nephews. Like, Fantastic. They follow me. Yeah, they're great. It's always the younger ones that are just, they get it. Like, you don't have to explain and like they understand and they think it's pretty cool. But my brothers and sisters can be still like, like they're all still very in the, in the religion. Mm -hmm. So they, I, I don't, oh gosh. I feel like sometimes they just tolerate me <laughs> and my loudness and my like, cause I'm a Leo and you're gonna get me. And like, that was this from jump. Like yeah. I was like a boy and then came with boobs and a bikini and like shoving it in their faces. Like you're gonna get it. <laughs> so yes. it was, I'm pretty like, like out there. But um, now I feel old, like now that we're older, they definitely have a respect for me, especially with things happening with um, in family. Like my father had passed away. Uh, about five years ago, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a really trying time for my family. Everyone did not know how to take that. Um, he was 80 years old and he committed suicide. Wow. And it was uh, the hardest thing I've ever done. And if you are contemplating anything, any kind of feelings, please reach out to someone. Um, it's the worst thing you could do to your family. And um, I suggest no one has, has ever have to go that far. But um, it really made me and my family kind of get together and just kind of, well, here we are. We have this like crazy connecting thing again that is gonna bind us for life and yeah. only us will understand how this made us feel. So, you know, just kind of bury, bury things. And it was really uh, cathartic at least. That's good. I'm yeah. glad at least for such a tragedy could at least bring you together closer to that's your all it is, and right? sisters. Yeah, that's all it is. Just uh, getting by, getting through. Yeah, I mean, in this in this time, this time. there's a lot of getting by <laughs> and dealing with loss and tragedy, which is why when I like to look at your performances, I get a lot of joy from what you do. <laughs> and those hair flips. Can I get into one right now? Yes, wait, let me get this one. <sighs> Ah. <laughs> and just, I can never get enough. <laughs> ah, thank you. Now, if you want to see more of Sasha's hair flips, you know, follow her on all social media and follow us at Hey Queen TV on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Black People Meet, J Date, uh, Christian Mingle. Erica, make up a website. Hairflip.com. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, Sasha, you have some legendary looks in your mm -hmm. legendary oh. performances, and we're gonna play a little game where you're gonna look at some of your looks. It's a round of The Look Goes As Follows. The Look Goes As Follows. All right, uh, so we're gonna show you some of your legendary looks, and you're gonna tell us a little bit about the look, what inspired it, and what you would title this look. Okay, okay. All right, the look goes as follows. Oh. <laughs> well, that look, my goodness, that was uh, the look of love. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was in Hawaii. Um, I was at this uh, little beach around Diamond Head in Waikiki and with my really good friends, uh, Shot 55 Photography. They do the men and women of Hawaii calendars. So yeah. it's like always like those beach gods and goddesses. And I needed that in my life. Yes. Who doesn't need a goddess moment? And we caught that light. Like we caught that sunset. Stunning. It was raining. <laughs> I remember my mom was acting crazy with me and I was so annoyed like getting on top <laughs> there. I was like, why is this lady going crazy? And she knows I have to do stuff. And I got there, I was like just trying to breathe. Then this rainbow comes out of nowhere. And we caught that in some of the other shots. But um, I, that's one of my favorite ones. Really gorgeous. That. that was a good day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> good day. Uh -huh. All right, the look goes as follows. Oh, fresh face, flawless. Yes, yeah, I, um, that was hiking in Big Bear, um, right around when we were sort of able to like venture out. I think it was in July around my birthday. And uh, it was just me and my two good friends. Uh, shout out to Preston and Clint. Um, but they, we went hiking and found like some really nice light that just hit off um, one of the rocks. It was, I was feeling my hold on to one more day. If you ever yeah. been to Big Bear, it's like <laughs> literally Wilson Phillips <laughs> with those huge rocks. So I was feeling that. And then um, I remember I had workout clothes and he was just like, we'll just take it off and like, you know, just do the thing that, you know, Sports Illustrated, he's, he called it. And yeah, we just got that shot. 
And there oh, she, she is. I, you always, you seem like you're one who's down for a photo shoot. I mean, I can spot a flash, a blood, <laughs> yeah. and a broken man in the dark. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, the look goes as follows. Oh. That's my um, Preston and Clint again. We've mm. been very creative during I love this quarantine. It. Um, that was when I just filmed my latest video uh, for like digital drag shows uh, called Cosmic Love, Florence and the Machine. Uh -huh. And I was feeling, I'm feeling very, you know, um, invoking my goddess, my witch, whatever you want to call it. Yes. And I'm, yes, I have converted. I have crystals. I live in LA now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if there's ever time to convert to being a witch, Honey, it's now. <laughs> girl, something's got to happen. Right, we need all the invocations <laughs> that we can, Penny. please. Spells. Because <laughs> our president doesn't know how to. So exactly. Spells, Woo. Hello, children. 